Hey everybody, I am in Cope, South Carolina now, and I'm at a place that I have seen pictures of over the years, but now I'm finally here, so I'm gonna walk around and see all what's here. So this is the Valentine's store. And this says Valentine's, a way of life not forgotten. And it says, Bank of Cope, founded in 1918 and serving the town and surrounding area for 15 years, the Bank of Cope was one of three banks in Orangeburg County to survive the banking holiday in 1933. Seeing a greater future for the Bank of Cope in the city of Orangeburg, the directors loaded the bank property on an opened truck and under the cover of night moved the bank to Orangeburg. It opened the next day as the Bank of Cope at Orangeburg. So the bank's over there see that over there and you got the United Methodist Union United Methodist Church founded in 1997 Union United Methodist Church is one of the three churches in the community that can trace its roots back over 150 years it was formed with a consolidation of old Union Church and Oakland Church and horse collars to crochet needles Valentine's Journal store was established at the turn of the century by Joseph I, Valentine. The business included diversified farming, a cotton gin, the sale of fertilizer in the journal store, which advertised everything from horse collars to crochet needles. The store continues to be a working journal store containing the original fixtures and offering patrons everything from bologna to nuts and bolts. Located in one section of the store, remnants of merchandise sold during the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Although these and various other items throughout the store are not for sale, they are displayed for your viewing. And then you got the Cope Depot. In 1893, the Manchester and Augusta Railroad desired to extend their service from Rim Rimney, South Carolina. Jacob Martin Cope made an agreement with the railroad company to sell a parcel of land through which to run the railroad tracks. In the beginning, the depot housed the telegraph office and handled both passengers and freight for the railroad, making the depot the prime source of communication and transportation. On March 29, 2001, the Cope Depot was entered into the National Register of Historic Places. So they got these old Texaco pumps. And it looks like gas was 30 cent a gallon at that time. And this says Valentine's, a peek into the past, Valentine's Cotton Gin and Journal Store, circa 1900. Valentine's was established there in the early, early 1900s by Joseph I. Valentine. The business included diversified farming of cotton gin, sale of fertilizer, and everything else around on that sign over there. A Valentine's Cotton is still king and rural living is at its best. Visitors can experience the ginning process and follow cotton from the field to the bale. Oh, that is cool in there. I hope that comes in the view, but there is a chicken in that box. really nice old doors there and they got the sunbeam little girl up there it's cute so that is a bale of cotton which makes sense since they had the gin here. But I read somewhere that the gin fell whenever Hurricane Matthew came back past, I think in 2016 or whenever that happened. 
So that over there is the depot. That over there is the post office. I do have electricity in there because the ceiling fan's going. Which I read somewhere that you can call the phone number and people will come and let you tour it. But of course, I did not know I was coming today. I just noticed they got some old clothes hanging up in there as well. So, Mom, how do you like it? So far, it's got a beautiful confederate rose. Have to come back through here whenever it's blooming uh. in October uh. or September. I wish we could go in there. I read somewhere that you can call them and they offer tours, but I don't know if they'd offer a tour on a Sunday morning. So, But that was over there. That was a, um, where they stored stuff from the railroad. Where people could buy. It could be. It probably is. Because that looks like a storage for warehouse. Just like they're building all that. Uh huh. That's new there. And it said Telegraph here, Western Union. So you could have done everything. A way of life. Not forgot. Where's that at? I don't even see that. Huh? Where's that? Oh, at? That oh, I already read the sign. Having a duh moment. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So I've been seeing pictures of this for a very long time. It's very, very much shown on the South Carolina Picture Project. I used to put some of my photos on there, but I don't anymore. But um because everybody's going everywhere now, so why not just share my stuff on YouTube? But this place, this is always what I imagine stuff would look like in the past, and that's something I would like to do. You know, sometimes I know I was born whenever I, I was supposed to be, but that's how I would perceive like Little House on the Prairie to be like where you've got everything that you need in one shop. You can get your food and your clothes and your stuff for the farm and everything else. So. And here you could even get gas and send telegraphs. So I think it's a pretty cool place. That's better than what it got now. They used to have to wait on a telegraph. <laughs> yeah. Now you just go ahead and send the money and it's there in 15 minutes or less. That is a um, thing of the past. Yep. Yes, they pretty well kept it up. Yeah, it looks really nice. I'm, I like the color scheme too. Yeah. I like the um, old gas pumps. That's something you don't see every day. Yeah, that's that's really nice. And they ain't got them in a museum. Nope. <laughs> They're out here. So. You got it? Yep. Well, that's the post office there. So that building over there is the depot. And it says that is private property. Like 
they still have stuff under there. Yeah. They probably have some kind of events, maybe. Or they just like to really look patriotic. Got American flags and a South Carolina flag underneath there. And that over there is the building that's beside the store. And obviously they are Clemson fans. And that little building right there, that is the old bank. tells about it on the wall. Right. So that says that was the Manchester Augusta Railroad Coach Station established in 1894. And over there is the National Historic Register and it says Coke Depot. And it says, Cope Station, a peak into the past, Manchester and Augusta Railroad Cope Station, established 1894. And I cannot read that far away. But anyway, if you can pause it and read it, feel free to do so. I might have to do that myself. So right there, they have a monument, and it says, to those who pay the supreme sacrifice in the line of duty I don't see anywhere to park but obviously it's a park because there is also a gazebo back there and I'm gonna guess that right there is remnants of the old cotton gin that used to be there And then this was the old bank. And it also has something on the thing, but I don't see anywhere to park. Really beautiful murals up there. And I think that was the, where they, whatever they had shipped in, that was um, a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Cause you got the depot there and could be where they stored the um, stuff from the cotton gin, too. Yeah, probably was. That's cotton after the mill. You got some old gas pumps back there. this video of the Valentine's store and everything else you saw back there in Cope, South Carolina. And I got some information from the South Carolina Picture Project. And anyway, the um, general store and the cotton gin that used to exist was both established in 1911. And they were central to the community of Cope, which was founded in 1894. And then Valentine's son Robert took over the store along with his sister in 1937 and they replaced the original store with the current building in 1940 and they passed away in the 1980s and it says like I had previously thought that the cotton gin was destroyed whenever Hurricane Matthew came around in 2017 and it says on here that if you call ahead, you can still have tours of the store. I don't know if that's actually correct. I did not see any kind of phone numbers out there, so I don't know. But that is certainly a treasure. It kind of reminds me of the store at South Carolina State Museum, if you've ever been there. The old general store that's up there on the fourth floor. 
and that's pretty cool to go into because they got all the old timey stuff in there and they got the lady at the counter selling fabric and stuff and the two old men's back there beside the fur what they call that thing stove stove oven whatever it is pop, pop, pop belly stove, stove. They're back there and it's like they're playing checkers and talking and stuff. So that's what you would imagine would happen someplace back there. Well, not someplace back there, but a place like that back there. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. Been looking at it for years on the internet and I said, well, why not go? I'm out making videos today, so why not? So how'd you like it, Mom? It was good. It was good. I think it took her back probably some years into her past see things like it was when she was growing up. It was more like it was in the past years ago. And I like stores like that because you could basically get everything you need in there. I'm pretty sure that that type of store would have the sugar and the flour and the eggs and whatever else you would need to survive. It was, it was a one-stop stop shop store like Bucky's is today. <laughs> <laughs> she had to throw the Bucky in there. There's a little Bucky up there. He's always on all our journeys. But anyway, what do we say now? If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to her videos. You didn't say your usual thing. It usually says it's free. It is free. Yes, it does not cost anything. I am kind of steadily moving up right now and I don't know how long that trend is going to last but I guess somebody she needs to possibly get, is sharing my videos. She needs to get a thousand. Well, I'm, I'm far away from a thousand subscribers. I'll tell you that. Not as far as what you was. Yeah, I'm not as far as I was. I think gosh, probably last year this time I might have had nine subscribers. <laughs> because at that time I was still using my Instagram name. My Instagram name is mistaken. And that's what my original YouTube channel was called. But I spell mistaken differently than what people would. It's M-I-S-S-T-A-K-N-I-D. And that stands for mistaken identity. Because a lot of times people think I am somebody who I am not. They'll be like, oh, don't I know you from somewhere? No, you don't. You might possibly know me from somewhere, but not where you think you know me from. So that's how that came about. But a couple of years ago, I had also started writing some blogs for myself because nobody reads them. And my website on that is travelingthesoutheast.com. And I actually need to get like writing on there. That right there, back there would be a great thing to write about. I might do that. But um, I said, you know what? Let me see if anybody's taken the Traveling the Southeast YouTube name. And fortunately, they have not. So I was really impressed with that. So. I travel the southeast all the time so why not show parts of the southeast and i'm mainly in south carolina but i do visit other places as well so i like to show off where i've been and the reason behind that is because there are some people i know they can no longer get out and this is the only way they can see places anymore and i said well you know i'll start making the videos and if anybody watches that's fine and if they don't that's fine too but then at least i have something I can go back on and look in the future. So, starting to have pretty good turnout with it and stuff. So, hopefully, other people are finding me and my parents and a channel out there in the weird ways of how I act. At the next stop sign, turn right. And my GPS, it's, it likes to make appearances every now and then in these videos. So, anyway, if you did watch and you listen to all my rambling just then, because I do like to ramble, hope you enjoyed. Oh, now we're in Norway, Norway, South Carolina. But anyway, we were in Coke back there. But anyway, if you did watch, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.